All right, got a quick one for you today. This is 410A. Our suction's sitting at 40. Our head pressure's at about 375. When I showed up, I added some refrigerant. Suction pressure stays the same. Head pressure shoots up sky high. I'm gonna condemn this TXV. We're gonna replace this TXV now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do what they call pump down the system. You've got your two king valves right here. I'm gonna shut down all the way on this king valve and then I am going to engage the contactor and it's gonna suck all the refrigerant into that compressor. Well, most of the refrigerant anyway. Always use caution when dealing with high voltage. As soon as the as I get as much refrigerant in there as possible, I am going to pull the breaker and then shut down on the suction valve and recover the rest of the refrigerant. To do this, you'll need two tools, a wrench to get the caps off, and HVAC service wrench. It makes it faster to shut down on the king valves. I'm just gonna get the suction side started. I'm not gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna have this wrench ready. I am manually going to engage the contactor. You're gonna see the suction side shoot down, trapping in all that refrigerant. Pull the breaker and then finish shutting down on your suction valve. And these compressor valves should prevent refrigerant from reversing into the suction valve. So you can save almost all of the refrigerant. Now we'll just recover the remaining and start with the TXV installation. Not much refrigerant left in that line set at all. Probably less than a pound. So by pumping down the system and trapping it in the compressor, it took about five minutes to recover the rest of the refrigerant. Not much left in there at all. Probably about a pound, maybe less than that. Gonna trickle some nitrogen through there just a little bit. I've got my bottle open. I'm just gonna open up on this a tad. If I was smart, 
I would have installed a pressure port right there at the air handler so I wouldn't have to keep coming up here. Just gonna pressure test this now, jack it up to about 200. The soap bubble test was good. So with the system under pressure, I did the soap bubble test. Some people like to wait 20 minutes at 200 PSI. I don't bother with that. If there's a leak, it's gonna show up where I put the soap bubbles. I'm just gonna drain it and then put it on a vacuum. I'll run through how I got this set up, but let's start this off. I've got my valve for my vacuum pump closed. I'm gonna turn the vacuum pump on. So we got the vacuum pump on pulling down. I've got um, three ace hoses and a charging manifold or evacuation manifold, yellow jacket. I've got this hooked up on the top. This hose is gonna be under vacuum. It's going to the gauges so I can break the vacuum with nitrogen or refrigerant. refrigerant. I've got my Micron gauge up here. It is connected to the high side port. It really doesn't matter if it's connected to the high side or low side. So I'm gonna get this bad boy under vacuum. Open the valve. This setup will pull down extremely fast. So while we're doing the vacuum, I'm just gonna run downstairs and put everything back together. This is uh, semi irrelevant, but maybe relevant. But when I'm pulling a vacuum, I always carry electrical tape on me and I keep my Schrader cores and uh, Schrader valve caps right in there so I'm not walking around the roof looking for them. So I had an issue getting below 600 microns. I had the micron gauge hooked up here. There's got to be a leak right here because it would not drop below 600 microns even with the on the vacuum pump for an hour and with this setup it should be it should take minutes to get below 600 microns i changed my setup and now i'm at 195 i'm going straight off the manifold so what i'm going to do when it comes time to break vacuum i'm going to shut the valve right here shut these apn valves and then just crack open the um king valves but i'm gonna let this run a little more see if i can get it a little lower and then charge it up i'm gonna shut the vacuum pump off and i'm gonna check for rise again you're gonna get a little bit of a rise but this is pretty good this this is a good indication that there's no moisture in the system i'm gonna shut down on my valves just because i don't want to send a bunch of refrigerant through my micron gauge Releasing the refrigerant. Going to put both of my Schrader core valves back in. the valve core tools putting back on the king valve covers hooking up the gauges charged by subcool but I'm gonna let this run for about five minutes before I add any refrigerant just until everything gets settled so we got about 12.8 I don't know 12 subcooling our suction pressures at 120 
coil temps at 63. That gives us a 23 degree superheat. I'm good with that. I'm gonna wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. If I missed something, go ahead, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe for more AC content, apartment maintenance, fixing stuff. Until the next fix, I'm Dave Spates. See y'all around.